And welcome back to News On. So uh, no surprise to many of you, but voter fraud has become an animated issue, to say the least, for many of you who supported former President Donald Trump. And as we mentioned yesterday, Jenna Ellis, a host of Just the Truth, which you can find right here on Real America's Voice, just started a pact when it comes to voter integrity. But others argue those missions and some of the laws that we're seeing all across the country could actually hurt Republicans when it comes to the 2022 midterms. Joining us live now to weigh in on this and so much more is co-founder of Tech Surge and Democratic strategist Krishna Godawala and founder of the Patriot Academy, Rick Green. Thank you both for joining us here on News On. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Hey, Miranda, good to be back with you. So as we mentioned at the top of the show, the Democratic Party in Arizona actually reaching a deal now with the Republican-controlled state Senate there. The policies and the procedures for the recount were released last week, but the election director says that there are problems with the rules, saying that it lacked specifics and allows counters to accept a large enough error rate that could show that Trump won the state. Meanwhile, you also have Arizona Secretary of State uh, the other day raising concerns again about the audit and actually sending a six page letter uh, to the former secretary of state there. Uh, Want to get your reactions uh, to what's happening in Arizona. Let's start with you, Krishna. You know, the audit is really not the point of all of this. There's already been two audits that took place last year and the company that's been contracted, Cyber Ninjas, they've never done election work. The leader of the firm actually is known for peddling conspiracy theories. But what's happening here is that Republicans are setting themselves up for, for quite a few uh, political moves. So with the DOJ getting involved, they're going to be able to say, oh, well, Biden is shutting down the this audit. They don't want Republican votes to be counted. They don't want voter transparency. It becomes a new talking point in their arsenal. Now, if they are able to go through with it and, and some of the practices that they've been using for the audit have been a little bit questionable. If they're able to get through it, they're going to be setting a precedent for future audits to happen in the same way. And furthermore, if by some stretch of the imagination, they're able to find even a, a minute kind of a, a difference or something to suggest that there was voter fraud that took place, you know, that's going to be, again, that's going to motivate them and give them reasoning to push through more voter suppression laws. So it's a win-win because at the end of the day, I don't think the Arizona GOP would have cared so much about the issue of voter fraud if the state didn't elect Joe Biden and Mark Kelly. Rick. Well, let's step back and, and look at what we're all, hopefully Democrat and Republican, uh, looking for in every election. And that is we wanna make sure that we're accurate. We wanna make sure there's transparency that there's verification and that there are legal remedies. I've been through this personally. My first race for the legislature, I lost by 20 votes out of 30,000. We had a recount, we followed state law. My opponent and I looked at every single ballot together. Uh, we found that 56 votes actually were counted wrong by the machines and I ended up winning by 36 votes. Looked at my opponent and said, hey, Texas law says you can have a second recount if you wanna verify. He said, we were able to look at every ballot together. Why would I do that? You won. So there was no claims of cheating. There was no, you know, uh, let's change how elections work. That's what we need. We need verification. We need transparency and legal remedies. We didn't get that in many of the states in this presidential election. And so that's what Republicans are trying to do here is simply get some transparency and verification. Uh, there are no voter suppression laws being passed by anybody in the country, only voter verification laws. That's a good thing. Having this verification in Maricopa County is a good thing for both sides to be able to verify the outcome. Whatever it turns out to be, at least we will know that everybody was able to look at every single vote and verify what that outcome was. One of those Republicans who happens to agree with you, uh, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, signing a bill into law this morning, in fact, aiming to curb access to mail-in voting in the state. But some argue that these measures could actually hurt the Republican Party, including a former Republican pollster by the name of Frank Luntz. Uh, this being reported by Axio, saying that this could actually backfire on Republicans. What are your thoughts on this? Because I think it's kind of confusing that there are mixed messages going out there, Krishna. I mean, here, obviously, you have people already throwing their name in the hat to run against uh, Ron DeSantis. He is considered to be a front runner, possibly running for the presidency. Um, but there are a lot of people saying that the people that supported 
President Trump and some of his policies are the ones that are going to do well. It's the ones that didn't, like the Liz Cheney, that have been very critical of the president. Meanwhile, you have these laws going into effect, which some people who support former President Donald Trump back. So which is it? Is this going to hurt Republicans or is this going to help Republicans when it comes to the 2022 midterms? Well, let, let's get one thing straight. For Ron DeSantis, he's trying to position himself to be the anointed one, that if Donald Trump doesn't end up running for president again, that he turns to Ron DeSantis and says, that's your guy, that's who you want. Now, that's more about his political power. Now, if we're talking about these actual laws going into effect that could actually backfire, a lot of Florida's Republican population, they're older, they might actually be relying on vote by mail. So it's really, we're going to have to see what happens in 2022 on a ground level, because at the end of the day, we are creating confusion, and that's never good for voting. And, and kind of a, a, a final point on this is, you know, you have Republicans across the country that are saying they want voter transparency. They're lining up to put out these new bills and provisions. But if you ask a single one of them if they want to sit down and they want to actually work on real reform to make voting easier in this country, nobody is willing to have that conversation. There is no reason that voting can't be simple and error proof without happening at the cost of the voters expense. We have all the technology and provisions available to us to make that happen, but nobody wants that to happen because protecting voter integrity isn't the point. It's about making sure the right voters come out and, the, and a specific type of voter stays home. Well, let's talk about people that actually have the legal right to vote. So we've heard this argument over and over again um, that this idea of asking for identification is somehow voter suppression. If it's that difficult to get an ID, why don't Republicans and Democrats come together and make it easier? Would that not be a compromise that would make both parties happy? Well, Miranda, there's a difference in philosophy here. It, it, the goal is not to make voting easier. The goal is to make voting accurate, make sure that only legal voters are voting and that their vote is not canceled out by an illegal vote. There's a reason that Ron DeSantis is the most popular governor in America right now. He's head and shoulders above any other governor in the nation. And it's because he doesn't look at the policy based on what's gonna best benefit Republicans or best benefit Democrats. He looks at the policy, he looks at how the voting process is gonna take place and does what we should all be doing, which is to say, what's gonna create the most accurate, most fair process. 77% of the country supports voter ID. Why do Democrats continue to oppose something that even most of their folks support? We want accurate elections. We wanna make sure that the people that are voting are the people who say they are, right? Have that voter ID. We require voter ID for so many things. So it's not even popular with their own people. Those are the kind of things you're exactly right but, that Republicans But in the time that we have remaining, because we are tight on time, and I do want Christian to respond to this before we get a commercial break. One, do you think that this will benefit or hurt Republicans when it comes to those 2022 midterm elections? It's sorry, still to be that or, or Christian? I'm asking Rick that, and then I do want to go to you, Christian. Oh, sorry. I, I, ahead, I don't Rick. think it matters. I, I think they're still allowing for mail-in ballots for those very few that need to be able to do that, and their decision should not be based on is it going to hurt Republicans or hurt Democrats. It should be based on what's fair and what is accurate for all Floridians in this particular case, and we need to do the same thing in every single state. Krishna, we are coming up on a commercial break, so I don't want to cut you short on time. So I'm going to ask you both to stick around. I'm going to get you to respond to that and what impact that you think that this is going to have on the midterms and also going to Rick's point about IDs. Again, that question, right? We hear Democrats say uh, that's suppression. We hear Republicans say, no, that's integrity. Uh, I want to get Krishna to respond to that. Also, as always, you can always weigh, on, weigh in on these issues. We'd love to hear from you. Hashtag share your voice. You can find me at Real Miranda Khan. Uh, we will be right back. We're also going to talk about uh, the National Day of Prayer proclamation just signed by President Joe Biden. Uh, but it's created some controversy because it doesn't include the word God. Why is that? We're going to ask our panel to weigh in. We'll be right back. You're watching.